years and Chef had writing so that when they transferred, transitioned into their first feast, it was all made sense to them, you know? And so I wasn't there for their first feast, and, um, but I heard wonderful reports how these five young women, the mother and their daughters, got up and they drowned and they sang and they quoted from the writings and they, um, you know, served the pies that they had made during their children's class, you know? A lot of times when I think about teaching, I always try and think about the grandiose, you know, rounding up hundreds of people and, and um, you know, moving things along as quickly as we can. But I, I'm finding that the most important thing in this process is to build genuine relationships because it's the genuine relationships that we develop in home visiting and in praying together and facing difficulties together that'll make a big difference. And so in addition to having children's classes, we pick salmon berries and we go out and we um, dig for cockles and we go out and we you know, gather roots together. And so it's really nice to have these traditional ways work so well with uh, sharing the word of God. And when you have a lot of creative word memorized, you don't have to pick berries and hold a book at the same time. So I really encourage everybody to really learn these songs too, because it's really fun to sing these songs and, and uh, be immersed in the word of God and pick berries and cockles and put them up together and have multi-generational um, Ruhi experiences, you know. So I just wanted to share that little story of, you know, what I'm doing in Juno, and I'm, I'm not so worried about how many people I'm t teaching the faith, but how it is that I'm sharing the word of God with the people.